So today we begin a journey. What journey, you may ask? Well, a journey, a foray into the bowels of human darkness because today I once again will be starting a episode in my vlog series called Reading the Most Disturbing Books Ever Written. Good morning. Today I woke up to a gift, okay? And this gift was an arc. And this arc was gifted to me by a horror author named Judith Sonnet. She said that I was allowed to dislike the book. So you know how some authors are. They're like, give me an honest review. And it's like, okay, they obviously want good reviews. But Judith was like, straight up, you can talk about it on your blog. And if you dislike it, I don't mind. And I was like, you know what? I like your attitude. You sound like a good sport mail me away. This morning I woke up to the PDF and I'm gonna be reading this book right now and this book is gonna jumpstart the latest episode in this series. So yeah, I'm gonna read for the sake of and then I'm gonna maybe read off season. I have the PDF on my phone and I'm gonna start reading right now. A few moments later. So I just started reading the PDF on my phone, and this book starts off with the stuff, okay? Like, the opening scene in this book is... Yes, bitch. <laughs> I don't know where this story is gonna go, but I'm getting some vibes, okay? I'm getting the vibes from that movie 13 Sins, where the guy would get the phone call, and they would pay him money to do these, like, super disgusting dares. Yeah, it's giving me those vibes. It's giving me demented game show vibes. It's giving me the vibes also of that movie Cheap Thrills, okay? I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But the opening scene, bitch. I'm also really liking the name of the antagonist in this book. His name is like Daddy Torture Fuck or something. I kind of already fucking hate this guy, but we'll see. We shall see. Okay, so it's a bit later in the day. Um, I made some coffee, I had some lunch, I continued reading a bit. It's starting to get a bit cold, so I'm gonna need to go inside and maybe get a sweater or something if I want to continue reading out here. But basically I have enough material to give you like a bit of a synopsis of what's happening. Basic premise, we follow a woman named Tabitha, but in this book she goes by Tabby. and. Tabby has a very fraught relationship with her husband. I think he's maybe her ex-husband or something. Yeah, they don't get along. And the reason they are no longer together stems from this trauma. Their daughter had been kidnapped or had gone missing or something. We learn that Daddy Torturefuck has chosen Tabby to be his latest victim. He has this thing where he tapes people doing degrading things in order to save someone that he has kidnapped and he broadcasts it on his, like, website where a bunch of, like, weird fucks, like, pleasure themselves to images of people getting shit done to them. Anyway, it's pretty sick, it's pretty brutal, and she becomes his latest victim, and he's like, you're gonna have to do some shit in order to save your kid. The pacing is very fast. This book gets straight to the point. It goes in on what you came for. It starts off strong. So I'm excited to see where this goes, and I'll check in soon later that day okay bitch it's like i'm getting scared i'm like actually getting fucking scared and i'm harassing the author okay i am like messaging the author i'm like bitch i'm getting scared this book is fucking me up and it's awesome but i'm liking it okay i'm getting really cold i seriously need to go inside and get like a jacket or a sweater or something but but, but. i just want to say that it's very windy and this book has a snuff film element to it so all my survivor people, all my pretty girls people, I feel like y'all might enjoy this, okay? Verdict's not in yet, the book might end up being a piece of shit in the end, I don't know. You know me, the ending can make it or break it for me. Like, if the ending sucks ass, I'm probably gonna give it like a two star at best. However, so far, it's doing good, okay? Judith understood the assignment. We shall see how this goes. Check in soon. Later that day. Alright, hi. I have pulled a Karate Kid and jacket on. Also, I've been like messaging the author like, Bitch, I'm scared. I am fucking scared because shit's going- Shit is going down. Like, shit is going down! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this PDF is only like 140 pages. So I am determined to finish this book today. I got this. I'm gonna do this. We're gonna do this. It's fucking me up so far, which we love. 
Finally, right? Like, after all this, like, boring, sanitized crap that I've been reading from big publishing houses, you know, if the book's got a pretty cover, and if it's, like, from a publishing house, and if it's standard 300 pages, I have less faith in it because I know it's gonna be sanitized and watered down for a mass market, but this? Fucking shit like this? You know? Shit with balls? Shit with fucking balls? We love that. I love that. I'm digging it. It's good. It's really good. It's, mmm. Fuck. Okay, fuck. Shit. There was a scene with eyeballs. Mmm. For people who read this book, and if you watch this vlog back and see how enthusiastic I am, you will think I'm crazy. <laughs> okay, because this book is like a hard, R-rated NC-17, probably will never be turned into a, definitely will never be turned into a movie unless now nah, they could never, Hollywood could, could never do this shit justice, okay? Like, this is Saw on steroids. Okay, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> the next day. Alright, hi. Hello. I'm sitting on a chair, and this is hands down the most comfortable vlogging background that I have ever found. So excuse the wind, because I'm not moving. But I finished, for the sake of yesterday, this book. And I've got some thoughts, okay? And they're all good. They're literally all good. I didn't vlog last night because I was a mess. I was just messaging the author. I was just like, this book is amazing. You are amazing. You are a genius. And I just could not form coherent thoughts in my head, in my mind, in my body, and in my soul. So I'm here to give you the tea on For the Sake Of by Judith Sonnet, the first book in this vlog, which has set the bar pretty fucking high. I think I'm gonna give this one four stars. It was pretty short, and I didn't really feel a connection with Tabitha, but you know, like, you can only spend so much time with someone in a book that's so short, but in its shortness, it packed a massive punch, and that's what elevates it from a three-star read into a four-star read into a strongly recommended category, okay? Sir, that's fucking rude. Okay, take your car honking elsewhere. Here is a professional note for all my Summer I Died people. This is for you, okay? Like, if you want some fucking gore, like, if you want some super- Hello, focus on me. I am the view, not the plants. All right. So I'm gonna recommend this to all my Summer I Died people because it does a really good job doing what that book did. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but I am saying that this book, I hope, does get really big, like The Summer I Died. The thing that bothers me with a lot of extreme horror books is that they say the bad things that happen, but they really under-describe it. Like, they just say, this thing happened to this person, this person was found looking like this. They don't really, like, sell the fear. Like, the writing in this book is so detailed that you will think that there is, like, sound effects. And the payoff and the ending, that was, like, one of the most intense third acts I have ever read. Solid four-star read. This is definitely more horror than thriller, so I can't promise that the survivor people are gonna like this. I don't think the Exquisite Corpse people are gonna dig this one too, but all the Summer I Died people, and maybe the Cows people, okay? Maybe you guys will like this book. That's my recommendation. Okay, um, I am gonna go for a walk, gonna get some food, and then I am gonna dive headfirst into Jack Ketchum's off-season. I think this is Jack Ketchum's first book. If you're new here, hello. Um, and if you want to see me read another Jack Ketchum book, I did read The Girl Next Door by him. And I gave it four stars, I thought it was a good book, and I read it for my second episode of this vlog series. That's this one, link down below. Alright, food, walk, off-season. Check in soon. Two seconds later. Alright, hi. So I've just started off-season by Jack Ketchum. The Jack Ketchum, the legend, the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Jack Ketchum. And I will say this, the book starts off very strongly. Okay, there's a chase scene. Someone getting chased. Someone getting chased through the woods, off a cliff, and into the ocean while people were like trying to like cut her up and shit. Awesome. Starts off pretty strong. What loses me is the aftermath of what happens because we follow a woman named Carla. Okay, a woman that I will venture to say I will likely give no fucking shits about. So the reason this book is called Off Season is because we follow this woman named Carla and she is renting this vacation home and this place that people go to 
during the summers and shit. It's near the ocean, it's off season, and because the book opens up with a bitch getting chased into the ocean by, I'm assuming, the cannibals. All right, I had to dramatically move. The lighting back there just wasn't it. Anyway, all right, so Carla. We follow a woman named Carla. And I just assumed that this was gonna be the bitch that we're gonna root for, okay? But it turns out so much of the first part of this book is dedicated to other people that I don't care about. Okay, so Carla has this sister, and she's got these, like, guy friends, and they've got these other friends. So they're gonna rent this vacation house together as Carla edits her latest project. There is so much time being put into establishing the relationships that these characters have with one another. Like, who fucked who in the past, who is currently shagging who. Let me just put my feet up. Do we like this angle? My feet are up. Um, because I own the place. Just kidding. <laughs> So, I don't understand why we need to know so much about this fucking bitch. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not faulting the book for character development, but the way Jack Ketchum writes this is just like, Character A, grocery list of shit we need to know about them. Character B, grocery list of shit we need to know about them. I don't fucking care. And they are so bland, they are like the most bland, cardboard cutout, straight, white, uninteresting people. I've ever read from. Imagine the first Friday the 13th movie, the one with Kevin Bacon. Imagine Camp Sleepaway. Imagine all those like movies set near a lake or a river or something with a whole bunch of people in the cast. Did you give a fuck about these people? I mean, sure there is a conversation to be had about the lack of character development in slasher books, but yeah, I don't care about any of the characters in this book. It's given me nothing but blackened teeth vibes in the amount of annoyance I feel towards these people, but not annoyance to the point where I will cheer for them to get killed. More like, I just, I'm bored, I'm bored. This is boring. This is boring. I'm not having a good time. It's just, yeah. Also, this other thing that's really annoying me. There's like this subplot about these like policemen, and I just wanna skip it. I don't wanna say it's like irrelevant by any means, but I don't care about law enforcement. Just give me the fucking cannibals already. Like, this book has taken forever to get things done. It's like, it's moving at a snail's pace. It is the molasses of extreme horror. I don't care about these people. Just give me the human barbecue, okay? And hurry up. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate a high kill count because that gives the author more opportunity to exhibit creativity in the deaths of these people, but this book is demanding that I give a shit about too many people and over-explaining about them, and I just do not care. I'm not enjoying this book. I feel like this is a first. I feel like I've enjoyed every single book I've read so far for this vlog, but this one's just not doing it for me, and I'm just like, uh, I wanna like it really badly, because it's got like a reputation of being one of the first like cannibal books or some shit like that, but it's so boring. I'm so bored. I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna change. Maybe go for a jog, maybe work out. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, chat soon. that day. Alright, so that's the chair I've been sitting in <laughs> um, as I filmed all this. But yeah, I'm in a new sweater right now. I have finished my walk, I've showered, I've eaten, and I am significantly further into off-season by Jack Ketchum. And here's the fucking thing. Here's what pisses me off so much. Eventually the action does happen. Eventually shit does start to go down. Okay, eventually stuff starts to occur, the cannibals come in, they ransack the house, they get up in these people's faces. What angers me is that Jack Ketchum feels the need to, in the middle of all the shit happening, cut to the cops. 
it completely ruins the momentum of this story and I just do not like what is happening right now. So far this book is just meh. Like there is sick shit happening, but yeah, I'm just not enjoying this so far. It's just, yeah. I'm gonna try to finish this book now and then I will have my review soon. The next day. So it's the next day. It's very gloomy, good morning. And I finished um, Off Season by Jack Ketchum last night and this, okay. Thank you, sir. Without a doubt, this is my least favorite book that I have read for this vlog series so far. It might be dethroned by Dead Inside, given what Jordaline and Megan said about it. I mean, yeah, it does get pretty gnarly at the end, but the overall feeling I was left with was meh. Meh. Alright. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> you know, um, this is apparently a trilogy, and some people have told me that it does get better with every subsequent book. So the book that comes after this one, Offspring, I hear is far stronger. What I like the most in this book was the interaction between the cannibals. Um, so whenever we would cut to the cave that the cannibals lived in and see them going about their day-to-day -day lives, I enjoyed that, okay? I enjoyed that. And a couple of things that they did near the end, um, there is a sex scene where blood is used as lubricant. That was fun. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I will say that the third act was pretty amazing, but the slog it took to get there was just not worth it. Like, I have read more violent stuff in books that were good from start to finish, and this was just like a boring first act, a boring second act, and a good third act. It was good. It was really intense. I'll give it that, okay? That's what I'll say on that. I don't know if I want to read Dead Inside, honestly. So I think I'm gonna start Summer I Died 2, okay? I keep calling it Summer I Died 2, but it's called... What's it called? I just got the ebook yesterday, fuck. Born to Bleed by Ryan C. Thomas. The legend, Ryan C. Thomas. Okay, I sincerely hope he did not watch that Summer I Died vlog. Because <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I watched a podcast of him where... <laughs> One of the guys interviewing him actually said to his face that he didn't like the summer I died And I was like dude to hold your composure in the face of such rudeness Bruh <laughs> anyway fingers crossed that it's good check in soon The next day hey everyone, okay I haven't updated this vlog in so long, but welcome once again to my office. So I know that I said that I was gonna read The Summer I Died 2 for this vlog, which I believe is called Born to Bleed, but I don't know if this is gonna be good news or bad news, maybe good news to some, bad news to others. I had a change of plan, and this change of plan happened last night when I was on a live with my friend Sarah and my friend Jan. Um, they were having this 24-hour readathon, and Sarah was telling me about the book she was reading, and that book is this. Hold on. That book is The Dare by Harley LaRue, and now apparently this book is a erotic tale of dark pleasure. So this isn't an extreme horror book, and I feel like some readers conflate extreme horror with disturbing books. And although most of the books I read for these vlogs are extreme horror, the word disturbing doesn't only apply to horror books. For instance, in the first reading vlog, I read Sarah by JT Leroy. And then in the third reading vlog, I read Boy Erased by Gerard Conley. Those books are not horror books, though they do deal with things that are horrific. They're not generally classified as horror books, although they are disturbing. So. With this book, it is a erotic smut book, I guess, and the reason I'm choosing to read this for this blog is because apparently I was informed that one, this book was getting really big on TikTok and everybody was freaking out and having massive reactions reading it, and two, apparently this book was banned by Amazon. I don't know if this is true, but I have seen this reputation floating around in circles that discuss this book. Disturbing people on TikTok, banned on Amazon, and apparently there are clowns. I don't really know what the storyline is. I don't know who gets dared to do what. I don't even know if I'm gonna enjoy this. Some of you might accuse me of like cheating picking this book because it's like, it's not horror, it's short, it's a TikTok thing. But objectively, I can make the case that this book has disturbed people, even though it may not have disturbed extreme horror readers. There is a community of people, a large one, that have been disturbed by this book. Anyway, chat soon. Later that day. Okay, hi. I am back. I am shaved. I am showered. 
I am fresh. I started reading The Dare by Harley LaRue, and this book is about a lot. Like, okay, so we follow this girl, I think she's like a freshman in college. I've already forgotten what her name is, but that's fine, because... Look at me, I sound really professional right now. Anyway, so a basic synopsis is that we follow this woman, and I feel like she's this freshman in college, and the book opens up with her going to this party, and at the party, we learn that this guy that she had history with named named Mason, Manson, or some shit like that, he has shown up to the party, and she and her friend are shocked. They're like, how did this guy, this loser, who was essentially a social outcast in high school that nobody liked, how did he get an invite to this prestigious party that us popular folk were in? We learn more about this guy. We learn that he had apparently been expelled because the main girl's boyfriend bullied him and he brought out a knife in the school, and of course that's grounds for expulsion. So he gets kicked out, he's out of the school, so they were shocked to see that he was still you know, a thing, and the book opens up with Manson and her playing beer pong, but it's like drink or dare. Like if you don't want to do a dare, you have to take the drink. So this is like 14% in, and they're already starting. So yeah, I'm only 14% into the book so far, but I'm really enjoying it, and I'm curious to see what's gonna happen, because shit's happening, okay? Shit's going down. Shit is going down. And I'm scared, but I'm ready to see what this reputation is all about. Probably gonna spend the next hour and a half out here. It's a short book. You'll see my live reaction. No spoilers, don't worry. Let's do this. Okay, bitch, um, I'm gonna piss people off with this vlog and I don't fucking care. When have, when have I ever fucking cared, okay? Um, I'm already like significantly like into the book, like 30% into the book. And I can confidently say straight up right now that I am liking this book more than off-season. Yes, this random TikTok book is one that I am finding significantly more entertaining than Jack Ketchum's legendary cannibalistic tome. Alright, I don't give a fuck. Flay me in the comments, and I'm pretty sure people that are pissed <laughs> haven't even read this book, but if you know, you know. This is entertaining. Like, shit is happening right off the bat. And here's the thing, okay? You can develop your characters throughout the story, okay? But while shit is happening, what I don't appreciate is taking so much time to lay the groundwork only for you to make shit ha- Okay, there's a crow. Hi. Thank you. Shut the fuck up. What I don't appreciate is when authors spend too much time laying it out only for shit to happen like at the end of the second act or predominantly occupy the third act and that was basically off season for me which is why that shit didn't work okay like okay so the dares they're giving each other that crow is not going to stop i'm sorry the dares they're giving each other are like fueled with bad blood like they don't these people don't like each other but in this main girl's head, she's liking it. I don't even know. I mean, realistically, she can just walk away because they're just giving each other dares in a party. But why doesn't she? It's starting to sound like she likes it. I don't know. I'm gonna keep reading chat soon. Okay, hi. Serious question for the individuals out there that read material of this sort. Why do people enjoy spanking? Like, serious question. Whenever I read a book with shit like this, and there is spanking involved, it just takes me out of the story. What the fuck is this? It hurts. She's literally internally fantasizing about the prospect of him turning her ass black and blue because he spanked her so hard. She didn't actually do it, but like she's like, she wishes it's happening. Why is it a thing? I need to know, okay? We like some overexposed lighting. We love being overexposed while reading about people who are overexposed. <laughs> there was like a bizarre tonal shift like, it's starting to get, like, mushy and emotional. They are confessing to one another about each other's lives. What? Also, can somebody explain to me why there are clowns in this story? What the fuck is happening? What am I reading? <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> no! No, 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 no. <gasps> I need a break. I need, I need some food or something. I, I, mm, I'm going. I'm, no, 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 no! <laughs> Bitch. Bitches. People, humans, on the internet, I am squirming. There was a scene near the end that had my thighs, like, pinched 
together, like squeezing together. This has left erotic territory and gone into like straight up ritualistic fucking shit. Like what the fuck is, what is this book and why? Why is this book? Who is this book for? This book is scarier than off season, straight up. I'm, I'm there, that's period. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I finished the book. It has been two hours later, two hours of dramatic screaming. What the fuck did I just read? Okay, what did I, well, literally what the fuck did I just read? This is certainly more tame than a lot of the extreme horror I've read in terms of how people emerge <laughs> from the events of the story, but the way this author describes this shit made me squirm and fear for my life. <laughs> like, the scene near the end involving a candle that does not sound good, okay? It doesn't sound like fun. It does not sound like fun. This book fucked me up more than off season. That scene with the candle was cursed. I actually did like how dangerous this story felt despite all the events happening within the confines of consent. This book does address many, many times, this is something she wants, this is something he wants. Ultimately, the book builds to a resolution between these two people and the way they navigate each other's like strengths and weaknesses and kinks is like really interesting. She opens it up for a sequel in the end, like there is enough material for a sequel and she does leave that promise up for people who want it. There's just like so much tension to be had in hot people who hate each other but like want to fuck each other, okay? And the way she builds tension off that conflict, it's fun, okay? It's fun. Literally this book is fun. I'm gonna go message Sarah and tell her that I finished it and that it was fun. Thank you Sarah for this recommendation. This is where I got this recommendation from, okay? Okay, yeah, anyway. Chat soon. <laughs>